previously on the Lupe Fuentes experience. Yeah, I mean, I think people bring, a, I honestly truly believe most of people's feelings around porn and performers or, you know, film, adult film performers is based around fear. I really do think so. Because, you know, they say fear and anger is such a fine line, right? I think a lot of the things that make people angry are things people are afraid of. And that was kind of how I felt for a while, just as far as pornography would go, I felt jealous that my boyfriend would watch it. I felt insecure that he would watch it. And that would make me angry. And then I looked deeper at it when I was making that mini documentary with you. And I was like, really, I'm just afraid. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still afraid of, of my own sexuality in some ways. And I'm really afraid of seeing people who are so, you know, the way I perceive it, so comfortable in their sexuality. Like we, we aren't exposed to that. super excited to talk with my good friend, mentor, DJ Sneak. I admire him for a very long time. And now he's going to tell us all the latest technologies and what he's been up to during the pandemic. So let's get to it. Welcome, Hello. DJ Sneak. Ladies and gentlemen, the house legend. How are you? I'm good, a little bit stoned. <laughs> By the way, those records that I see in the background, so cool. Yeah. I have been to your house yeah. and I know that your record collection is insanity. I mean, I don't even know how many records do you have. How many records do you think you have? I think I got about 14,000 records right now. 14,000 mm -hmm. records, mm -hmm. all genres. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's Techno, the coolest house, thing. Everything. Wait, wait, that's the coolest thing. Oh, Pick yeah, a just record just... out of the just random. <laughs> what is that? Really, real classic. This is disco. Oh, what, 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 what year? Um, these are disco. It is these top two levels here are disco, uh -huh. and then down here is techno, and over here is house. So I have it divided like that. You have it all organized. Yeah, I think my first record I bought was in 1985, and it's wow. in Chicago when I lived in Chicago. And then I still have some of those 80s records here, but a lot of the stuff that I kept was uh, 90s, which was the era where it, uh, the music was the most powerful, you know, for me. That's so. Is that your favorite era in terms of music, the 90s? The 90s was um, for me most definitely. I mean, in terms of house music and electronic music before I went to EDM and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say between 1990 and 2000 were the most, uh, I can say. The best years. Not only that, but m more innovative. Like a song, really? a song can inspire a nightclub or a, na or a name of a night for a party mm -hmm. or it had a lot of things, you know, like the yeah. music themselves, the, the music itself was the culture. Yes. Basically. Oh my God. I love that. Do you and think... you know, it's like people don't realize that songs like, uh, Daje Brighter Days, that was in 1992. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then all of Armand's big hits, that was in 1994, 1995. What's the your favorite, hits. what's your favorite song from that era? like the 90s, 1999, 2001, like around that time? I, I have, I have so many, I can't, I can't just give you one. <laughs> okay, I know, I know, that's such a bad question I for a 14, DJ too. I have 14,000 records behind me, they're all screaming and saying, no buddy, I'm the one. Okay. I have a lot of favorites, I have a lot of favorites, and I have a lot of favorites that have become favorites by the many people that I played for before, and mm -hmm. you know, I know that this is a favorite record for a specific crowd, I have those records in specific place, you know? Okay, three records you can mention right now. Just off the top of your head. I'm not going to say favorite, but that come to mind. Okay. I know you play a Adonis, lot of music. Adonis, No Way Back. That's one of my all-time favorite. Adonis from Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, there's a track that Rafi Rosario did called Amor Puerto Riqueño. Amor Puerto Riqueño. Oh. Yeah. 
the title just the title i have never heard it but please just the title i need to right. i need to experience that you you would like it it's very it house but it's got a lot of latin drums in it you know love I, you know i love the drums ravi rosario and then yeah i would say from the 90s 90s brighter days from daje that was one of my favorites that was like brighter because days. she's from chicago and we all mm -hmm. you know the song mm -hmm. ooh Oh, I need, uh, ooh, ooh, oh, oh, I, I need. It's that just one. so catchy. It's yeah. such a hit, and the fact that it's so simple, the simplicity of it, it's yeah. so it's just genius. What is DJ Snake excited for in 2021? Uh, new ventures, new new business models, new business. Nothing that I was doing before. I see you. I mean, we're very close. And I seen you, you have completely changed how you were doing business, how you were managing your career. And that has yeah. been so inspiring for me. Tell me a little bit about, you know, me, for example, I'm starting to, I, I stopped for a period of time. Now I'm going back to make and play music. How mm -hmm. you break through in 2021? I mean, for me, it was. I mean, you're the, yes. I need for to me in specific, for me in specific, mm -hmm. I had to go back to what made me the DJ that I, that I became mm -hmm. before social media. Mm -hmm. I had to come to a lot of uh, terms and realizations of things that had happened almost like start in 2020. And I started going backwards in my life because mm -hmm. I had time and we were all inside and yeah. whatever, you know? So you start reflecting, you start thinking, and maybe looking at old pictures or old video or something and it reminds you of the errors that you have you know and in my case that's 30 years you know what i mean like most it's, people yes. that i play for now some are barely 30 years old you know what i mean so i was around before they were fucking doing, i'm one of uh, them uh, you know? like yes i mean i yeah. see you and i know all the experience all of yeah. the shows all of the production like you have so much yeah. knowledge yeah and the thing is that you know through that 30 years you collect a lot of information you you make mistakes you learn from mistakes you make good moves you make bad moves you make uh honest moves based on a gut feeling like it's telling you okay you know what this feels good, and even though it's not proven, just go down this way because that's what your gut feeling is telling you. Mm -hmm. Or you have a manager that tells you, hey, mm -hmm. this is the way you got to go if you want to make it to that. If you want to play Electric Daisy or something stupid like that, they would. Mm -hmm. there's people that be like, if you just follow me down this hallway right here, mm -hmm. we'll just take you all the way to the end. I mean, you know, I, I, I talked... Um, I talk about a lot about what what happened and how it happened for me, so kids understand that there was a there was a beginning. In the beginning, everything was work and trying and seeing an opportunity and jumping at the opportunity. And mm -hmm. um, most people won't take a chance. Most people won't bet on themselves. Yeah, I right. I I. Uh, people are scared. Yeah, people I, are I, afraid. Mm -hmm. I'm. I'm born Puerto. I'm born Puerto Rican. Born in the island. I I studied with zero. When my parents decided to go to Chicago, we studied with zero. So I know what zero looks like, mm -hmm. right? And then that's been my my guiding. That's like my shit. Zero's way back there, and I'm going the other way, the other mm -hmm. direction. And ever since I got to the U.S. and had the opportunity to make something out of my life. I really just went with my gut feeling. Okay, I love that mentality that. of like believing in the muscle of your own decision. Yeah. A lot and of people. And believe me, there's a lot of people. There's don't. a lot of. Yeah, there's a lot of people that will tell you, oh, you'll never make it. Oh, you suck. Oh, your shit sucks. Or you're, you're never going to be what, mm -hmm. you, what you think you're going to be. But a lot of times I turn those into, oh, yeah. I'll prove you and I'll prove myself that I can do it. I'll prove mm -hmm. myself first that I can accomplish whatever you said I was going to do. And by proving myself, I prove everybody else mm -hmm. that doubt it. You know, <clears throat> at first they doubt 
then they copy you mm -hmm. and then finally they praise you you know but I didn't have a playbook I didn't have a manual I didn't even have a manager most of my career you just go with your gas feeling mm -hmm. yeah I mean you know I, I I brought people closer to me and when I found that I needed a, an agent to handle my bookings I was doing a lot of European and mm -hmm. worldwide bookings so I, that's definitely needed but a manager I was like, yeah, it's cool. My manager didn't, my personal manager didn't bring me uh, an opportunity that I didn't get myself. But when I would see an opportunity, I would jump at it and be like, I'm going for that shit. And I, I love, know I can do it. I love that mentality of overcoming, especially yeah. coming from, you know, Chicago back in the day and making it as an artist, essentially. It's, yeah. it's really not something that everybody can do no i mean you know it's it's there for everybody but some people really are passionate about what they do and mm -hmm. when you are that passionate you you will become one of the best in whatever it is my passion has always been music mm -hmm. i sold it i've made it mm -hmm. i've played it i'm still making it i'm still playing it I'm still talking about it. I'm still educating myself with music. I'm still finding new songs that I've missed or new things that I want to. Key Just Need can be anything else that I couldn't be because I was touring and I just love being that. a DJ. Tell me more about that. I am so excited because, you know, we talked before and I know some of your ideas, not all. I know you're always experimenting with new things. And right mm -hmm. now, especially, I seen you. You know, you're killing it with Future Stream, and I seen your your live your live sets on Twitch. I want to mm -hmm. know a little bit more how you're diving into the new era of electronic music because I think everything has changed. You know, after the pandemic, and technology is never gonna go backwards. It's only gonna keep evolving. So, what do you right. think is next? I mean, I. In saying that I've done everything, I feel satisfied. I, I felt that I my next move was to jump somewhere where it was a new challenge and something that I can learn, something new I can learn and something that I can implement whatever information and data I gather by being a DJ and producer of 30 years, you know? Mm -hmm. um, live streaming became a thing and I knew live streaming and I was talking to my wife, Melissa, about live streaming years ago and COVID gave me the opportunity to be actually say, you know what, I really always wanted to do this. So now is the time to get into it. Mm -hmm. So it was like learning something new. I knew nothing about hooking up GoPros and switchers and OBS and Wirecat. I knew nothing about that, you know, but I, I, I really dove into it. Like I really wanted to learn and then excel in it, you know, and, mm -hmm. Um, while a lot of people got stuck in different platforms like Facebook and all stuff like that, I was, I was always talking about finding somewhere where I can be private, somewhere where I can charge for my performance because. Like an online club almost. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and fortunately like, you know, Javier and, and future stream happened to be colliding and passing me by at the same time, you know, mm -hmm. and it became a thing, but at the same time, I was, today I explained it in another interview where I was on land where everybody's here and there's water and there's other land here. This land is undeveloped. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I swam through the whole current up and down. That's my career up and down until I got to the other side. Yeah, it's like entrepreneurship. Right? Sometimes it's like, it's great, That's it's it. great. Oh, I'm dying, it's awful. Yeah. It's amazing, it's yeah, terrible, yeah. I wanna kill myself. <laughs> but, that was, but that was it, you know, and for me, it was, it was more not so much before 2000, because I was already an established DJ producer before social media mm -hmm. happened. Yeah. It was after social media, I had a big battle with Facebook and Twitter I Why? Had, I was uncontrollable because Why I had a voice think, and an mm -hmm. opinion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I was very opinionated because I I got this pride of like, you But I will think being opinionated in social media 
it's really good, you know, and I imagine there are a lot of people that also share your same opinion. And I see your comment true. section, though. Yep. There, have, there are some, you know, there are a lot of people that support you and share those ideas, especially... Yeah, a lot of people like what I say. A lot of people won't support what I say because they're afraid to lose yeah. something. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of losing fucking nothing. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, hey, I, I'll, I, I will put... You know, I put my cojones on the table. Let's go. You know, <laughs> know and and the thing is that it, you know it's my it's my street knowledge and street hustle and all that stuff that got me through um, an industry which, like I said, I wouldn't have a manual. Nobody. Mm -hmm. I, I was DJing in Chicago, and then I started making a couple of records, and then my records went everywhere, and then I was getting calls from everywhere. So I was like, "What the hell?" Mm -hmm. I. Uh, yeah. I watched a bit of a, a documentary about Mary J. Blatch yesterday, last night. Mm -hmm. And it's a very similar it story. You know, she's 18. And all of a sudden, she went from nobody to becoming somebody to them being flown around the world and meeting this. And you have to do this interview. You have to go TV show. And you have... That what's shit. That, what's that like for a, you know, a young Latino kid, you know? To I mean, like go honestly, go from go from because I'm Latino I know how that's that's like mm. you know going from you know humble beginnings in a Latino family big mm -hmm. Latino family to being a DJ that just flew around the world to play house music which is the coolest thing how is psychologically how is how is that to go from like one stream to the other. To be known and people recognize you and people recognize you for your music and your talent like that i bet that it's not a feeling like it because you created that from your mind from your i know ideas. a lot of times though i think it's a dream really? a lot of times i think it's a dream really and i'm and i got dreamt three beautiful seven year careers one after yeah. the other you know what i mean like i mm -hmm. I didn't know how far I was going to get. I didn't know I was going to get on. And once I didn't, I got on, I didn't know how far I was going to go. Mm -hmm. And now once I'm on the go, I didn't know when I was going to stop. So, you know, it's like you, all you want to do is perform and, and share that love. You know, for me, music always has been music. So share that love and experience and change people's minds and, help people through through periods of, of depression or whatever. You know, hearing a song, hearing the right environment, the right vibe can lift the spirit. Yes. Oh I my believe God. house music, music can do it. Yeah. You know? Music, and I, oh, it's so therapeutic for me, I'm telling you. Yeah. I have a struggle for many years with anxiety and depression, and music is one of the things that can lift my spirits, like if I talk a pill. Yeah. Really, and that's, it changes. It changes your emotions. It changes your state of mind. That's it. And you know, people, what people don't realize is sometimes to make a song or a track takes a lot. Yeah. To put it together, mm -hmm. but people put it together and work hard to create this masterpiece of a song or a track that's gonna make you feel those feelings every time you hear it. My job is not only wasn't only to be a selector and a curator of music, my job became to then make the same music that I was playing before. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, it's been a beautiful, weird, exciting, and sometimes very crazy life. I, <laughs> last last year was the year that I said, holy shit. <laughs> like, what happened? everything that's happened this last 15 and then I went back 20 years and then I went back to the super beginning of like playing in Chicago at house parties and church parties and school dance and church parties oh my yeah, god yeah. once in a while they will kind of block off the street and do a street party around the church to raise money for the church mm -hmm. you know do something nice for the community and it this was in Chicago or Puerto Rico in Chicago Chicago. In Chicago, yeah. I I really got into DJing when I got to Chicago. I, I uh, part of my learning American culture was 
house music and graffiti. So while I was trying to learn English, because I only spoke Spanish when I got to Chicago. <laughs> me too. Me uh, too. Mm -mm. What saved me was graffiti art, because I was just, mm -hmm. I was already an artist, but graffiti really took me, and I went that direction. That's where the name Sneak comes from. That was my graffiti name. Really? That was your tag? Yeah. And then it became DJ Sneak because I was already Sneak from the graffiti, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, it, it, I don't know, man. And molded. It's like, I, 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 I landed in Chicago at the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. And that's all it was. And all I did was, I want to learn. I want to learn. I want to learn. You were hungry. Yeah. You know, my friends... My first group of friends in Chicago, they just fucking all laugh at me because I would say some, in Spanish, we we'll call it disparate, some straight up <laughs> made up word that we made up. They, so they would think shit. it was English, but it wasn't. <laughs> and they all used to laugh at me and shit. I'd be like, ah, that's funny. But tell me how you fucking say it. Then. And then I learned, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like yeah. I really learned English in less than, less than a year. I was already, uh -huh. In it. Yeah. Who was DJ Snake Carlos before America in Puerto Rico? There, there was no DJ Snake Carlos. There I, was I only, don't know why I'm saying Puerto there Rico. Was only, in Puerto there, Rico. Was only, there was only Carlos Sosa born in Arecibo, Puerto Rico. I grew up in Bayamón and San Juan, the metropolitan mm -hmm. area. I went to the beach every Saturday. My mom took me and my brother to the beach every Saturday, a different beach in Puerto Rico. I learned about music and some of these beach outings because they would be sponsored by Budweiser or something, a big stage with a bunch of salsa singers, a bunch of groups playing. That's so so cool. it was like always, you know, Latin, Latin culture is very different. Mm -hmm. Our, how can I say, my generation of Latin culture when I grew up in Puerto Rico, it was very different than what I, when I then saw in Chicago and New York, not to say like, oh, New York or Chicano, whatever, you know, it was like, they didn't really understand because they weren't down, they weren't in the island. They didn't grow up in the island. They yes. didn't understand the source. You know, it's like, you know, you're Colombian, right? And you like, mm -hmm. you went to Madrid and it's like, People will never understand unless they go to Colombia and shit. They will never understand. Yes, right? it's complete. So yes. it's the same with uh -huh. Puerto Rico. It was like that. And, and you know, the the best thing that I found, though, in music, especially in, in house music and electronic, was that there was a lot of Latinos and Puerto Ricans in specific mm -hmm. that were involved. There were players. Then there was, like, Dominicans, Colombians, Roger Sanchez, Eric Morello, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, uh, George Morrell, Kenny Dope, Louis Vega, David Morales. I mean, the list of the people who became big international DJs and players in this music, we all came from Latin backgrounds. Mm -hmm. You know? It's so beautiful because, yeah, our Latin culture is, is so beautiful. The music is, is so unique. I mean, just the drums. I hear drums and I hear Latino, Latino culture. Listen, I can, I can give you, a, I'm going to paint you a picture, right? My wife, Melissa is from Canada. She's I white. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh -huh. First time we go to Puerto Rico and I introduce it to my family and she don't speak fucking anything in Spanish. Maybe a few words. Right? Uh -huh. We traveled in this minivan, and every time there was a song on the radio that was dope, my mom would open the glove compartment, and a guido, maracas, and a thing would, and everybody started playing instruments in the fucking car, yo, <laughs> singing this <laughs> shit. And Melissa was like, it's what in the kind blood. of shit is this? It's you in know, the like, blood. Yeah. yeah, it's in the yeah. blood. That was the kind of uh, environment mm -hmm. that I grew up in. Mm -hmm. while, while we didn't have money, and lavish lives and and things that we have now, right? You have soul. You have soul. Yeah, and we had that bond of like, hey, yeah. something like a simple Latin song can bring everybody together, grab an instrument, start singing, and become a party like like that, you know? So What's your favorite thing, salsa? What's your favorite salsa song? Now, because I am imagining you, Melissa, I know Melissa very well, okay? And... 
I imagine you guys in the car with your parents. And I totally, I just picture your mother <laughs> taking the maracas out. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. His mom but can that, party. I'm just yeah. saying that. Yeah. My, my parents, my parents were very, uh, they were socialites. They, they, they're they, so social. They, they it. used to, they used to, when I was in my twenties and I was starting to get some of my first gigs and I would leave for the night. Sometimes we leave and when we coming back at the same time at five, six in the morning. And I look at my parents like, how was your party? Oh man, we loved it. Really? We danced all night. We hung out with the band and Conce, my stepdad, man, Conce knew everybody and da da da. And it's like <laughs> we that's had these amazing <laughs> Yeah, we had these amazing things. I think that's where my music part while wow, there was nobody that was a musician or a DJ in my family. Mm -hmm. um, the element of partying and having fun was in, was put in me when I was when I was little. I had two aunties, rest in peace. Both of them passed away, but they. I remember dancing, no shirt, in front of my grandma's house, and they would play a song. And I had to dance to the song and they would throw quarters at me and shit. I love that. That's such a Latin thing to do. <laughs> it was like, you know I was what? their entertainment. I love that. I was their entertainment. So I was like, oh, let's do some cool shit. So they would be like, all right, and get the boom But box. it was always around music. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. You know, like me growing up, I had so many memories of my mother playing salsa in yeah. the house and just singing and cleaning, you know, because yeah. we love to clean. Yeah. I mean, at one point, I thought maybe I was going to be a stripper, but I didn't know what a stripper was. But when you throw, <laughs> when you throw money at people and shit, you know, I think about it, you know, instead I became uh, a music, I, I became a music lover because I was exposed to different music. At, at Listen, age, you know? coming from humble beginnings from a Latin background, is either DJ or stripper. You can go either I'm kidding. <laughs> this is a joke. Some, some people do both. You know what I mean? Hey. <laughs> Some people do both. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? It's totally yeah. fine. Yeah. Totally fine. Yeah. So, you know, prior prior to Chicago, I knew nothing about electronic music or, or dance music. Mm -hmm. My favorite music was the Fanny All-Star team. Tito Puente, Celia Cruz, Hector Lavo, Willy Colon, Ruben Blades. The best of the best of like Panama, Central America, New York, all combined in a in a big old band, you know, and That's they made exactly. so many great records oh. that like I grew up. That was that was my shit. I love Hector Lavoe. Was... Maybe around around eight, seven or eight, a friend of mine had a family member that would travel lots to the states and come back. And she had records, and I listened to Elvis and the Beatles. That was my first English. What year speaking was that? In Puerto Rico, I don't know. I was like eight years old. I was 1978. What do you think after listening, you know, to all of the salsa? The I mean, I, I, I liked the melody, but I couldn't repeat what they Understood. were saying because I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, I mean, Elvis, you know, mm -hmm. but Elvis is easy. You nothing about a hound. Uh, Mm -hmm. That's, that so was the song. Yeah. So, well, you know, it was different, but it was still musical, right? So then, mm -hmm. and Puerto Rico eventually became very Americanized too. So the culture yes, of also came to the States. But we had our own thing that, I mean, to this day, some of the biggest artists that touch the music industry, and I, you're too young for this shit, but there was a group <laughs> called Menudo. I know Menudo. Menudo. Yeah, so that's uh, the shit Ricky that Martin I grew up listening to. Ricky Martin was in to. Menudo, right? Yeah. Because Ricky I have Martin a brother. Ricky Martin was the lead, yeah. It's like, yes, you and my brother used to listen to the same things. Yes. Yeah. 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 Menudo was in Menudo Ricky was the Martin. first boy band mm -hmm. that, that I ever boy band. saw. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think ever, see actually. Yes. Uh, yeah, I didn't see American boy bands until mm -hmm. after Menudo. Like New Kids yeah. on the Block and all that shit was. That was after way Menudo. after, way yeah, after. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so Ricky Martin, lead singer, he was the pretty boy. He was the. <laughs> he. It was weird because 
All the other members, as soon as they got older, they were replaced by younger members. But really? He stayed. <laughs> he stayed. He was the only he one stayed. they kept. He's always, yeah. And, you know, so from Ricky Martin to, I mean, reggaeton. Mm -hmm. I, I so much talent. So much talent has come from Latin America, you know, but so a lot from Puerto talent. Rico. Like, I remember when, when I, I went back with Melissa to Puerto Rico, I think the second time, and it was Teco Calderon, and it was, reggaeton was I love Teco Calderon. That, like, that was the guy that everybody in the street was playing his shit. And then, you that's, know. That's some you, OG shit right there, Teco yeah. Calderon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's like 20 years ago, man. Yeah. And, you know, to see it evolve to Bad Bunny, hey, you know, it's I personally, different. I like Calle 13 more, more than I like Bad Bunny. Oh, my God. You remember that song, Atrévete? Yeah. Atrévete, te salte de closer, destapate, quítate el desmayo. I love that song. You know, the one time uh, uh, while, while we were staying in, in Ibiza, Melissa and I actually went to see Calle 13. In no. Ibiza. I I would love. How was it? It was great. That's so like, good. Like, dude is a he's, so good. he's mm -hmm. amazing. Yo. Yeah, he's really talented. The, the amount of words that he spits out, and, and it's you crazy. have to be Puerto Rican to be able to, to pull understand. That off. Oh, yeah, and to 100%. that fast to do it that fast, yes. 100%. 100%. 100%. <laughs> so, listen, I'd love to go back to your roots, and now I want to go to the future. What's next for DJ Snake? The last 15 months for me has been a very uh, educating while relaxing and putting myself together to become a full DJ Sneak again. Not DJ Sneak watered down by the industry, but mm -hmm. like a full DJ Sneak, you know? Um, this time I have options and I'm pretty happy to be able to make moves and be like, I feel good with this, I'm going here. I feel good with this. I don't like that. See you later. I don't like that. See you later. And it's just like, it's, it's a bit of freedom, you know, after being the in power, the industry. The power of being an independent artist is so important to educate yourself, especially yeah. for young artists. You know, I feel like people yeah. a lot of the time just follows what the business model was, but there are new ways. Like, yeah, there's new ways. And, it, and yeah. if you're smart about it, you can, you can pretty much place yourself and the situation you're looking to, to be in. You know, I believe in this manifesting your destiny shit. If you talk about it and you focus and you keep on it and you put it out there, even if you say it out loud a hundred times out loud, you scream it to the fucking world, it's going to come back. You're manifesting it. Next, you know, you're doing it and you're like, holy shit, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I worked on it. I talked about it, worked on it, and I'm here today. So what's next? And those are the type of things that keep you, keep an old man like me going. I believe in when I was young and I was coming up and I was always hitting on shit or drawing or doing whatever, my mom was like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy, man? Because mm -hmm. I was in Quito, very like, mm -hmm. always wanted to do something. Oh, I want to craft. Oh, I want to paint. Oh, I want to draw. Oh. You were creative. You know, and now, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and Isa, our daughter is like that. Mm -hmm. Really? You know, Santo too, but like Isa is more like, I'm going to do some random weird craft creation, you know, and she'll go for it and be like, I'm going to do it. That's and so if you tell cool. her, you know, no, no, let's do it later. No, no, I'm do it right now. I'm going to do it right now. Okay. Like she and, wants to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Do, do you think any of your kids uh, will be into music like you, like become a DJ and do it professionally? I definitely, they're going to be musically inclined. Mm -hmm. You know, they've experienced a lot of awesome, crazy life, daddy life, fly here, fly there, 14 luggages, three car seats, blah, blah, blah. They've done all that shit already. So now mm -hmm. they're just like, ah, we're chilling, mm -hmm. you know, and. And they're, uh, I'm grateful that they got to experience that, even though it wasn't my fault when me and Melissa said, okay, because we were married for a while before we had babies. Mm -hmm. And then, then as soon as we decided 
it was like my career just took off again. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, shit. So it was crazy. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was a year of realization for a lot of people. It was like, we were all doing one thing. And it was like, okay, reset. It's really time to like stop, sit back and really re-evaluate your whole life. It happened, I think it happened to a lot of people. I mean, Me some included. people, yes. And some people just, they were like, I'm going to wait it out. And then after being in the music industry and all the shit, I really mostly survived from DJ gigs. And if I didn't have DJ gigs, I would not be living the life that I'm living today. Mm -hmm. Because music industry, as in selling records and CDs and shit like that, there was no real money there for mm -hmm. the artist. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. It became a promotional you know, tool. We used to sell records mm -hmm. and actually make money with records. Yeah. I worked in retail stores. I sold music. I sold all these types of records. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and there was a real economy that happened. There was distribution companies. There were small record labels. There was drivers. There was UPS, there was all the stores. I mean, there was a lot of people that ate from the creation of music and the distribution of music mm -hmm. until it changed, you know? Yeah. Now it's changing again, but now it's realizing that it's not a physical product anymore. It's a live stream. It's an, it's an experience, it's an that, experience. You can, that you can create for somebody and they could be in the own comfort of their own home or somewhere safe where they feel safe with their own friends and enjoy it as if they were in a nightclub. Where could we find the Disney live streams uh, for the future? <clears throat> Everything goes through djsneak.com, mm -hmm. which is my own domain. Um, I am streaming with Future Stream. I just started working on another platform called Monad. Mm -hmm. M-O-N-A-D dot social mm -hmm. slash DJ Snake. Uh, this is a subscription based platform. So any content that I create, whether for them only there or any other place, I could put it there for them restream. Mm -hmm. Once every four or five weeks, I do a psychedelic Saturday and I do mushrooms and I play music. It's a spiritual experience. You have to join. It is. It is. Um, I, I don't do many. I smoke weed and that's it. You know, but I love the shrooms because it takes me to another place. And also the music it matches mm -hmm. the vibe. So it's, it's really 100%. an experience. It's really an yeah. experience. So important yeah, it's, to make it's that. It's like the, the one time where I, I'm totally out of my element of house yeah. music and electronic. Really? Mm -hmm. And I go any direction that the, the trip takes me to. So you can get some really, you can get to hear some really, really cool, maybe even vintage all analog records. Yeah, hundred percent. And even now, the best is that now all these things are put at that Mona dot social where you mm -hmm. can rewatch it whenever you want. Mm -hmm. You just got to mm -hmm. become a member. So it's by for and you can have bucks. music for every occasion, really. A hundred percent. I put for the ladies. I put the disco. I put all the stuff up there. So if you want to feel like I want to do trippy or I want to do disco, or I want to do ladies or I want to do hard gangster shit or I want to do, you know, I, I've separated like that. You know? mm -hmm. Snake, thank you so much for the time. I love chatting. Thank you for, for always being there for me. You're a good friend. And a real well, thanks for having me and good luck with your new venture. This is good stuff. This is what I'm talking about. You're <laughs> You're breaking out of the norm and you're doing other stuff because you know you can or you want to do. Mm -hmm. And this is what makes good, good content. Good you know, content thinking creation. outside of the box, right? Yeah. I wanted to do something new. I love music. I love playing. I love producing. But I also love to talk to people and I love to learn about people's experiences and how they got yeah. where they got to. Make sure to subscribe. Leave me a review, start rating, and share with your friends on social media using the hashtag LupeFuentesExperience. I see you next time.